Uh, we're going to be talking about some uh, project management tools here. Uh, for those who, who don't know who I am at this point, my name's Missy. And thank you, thank you, thank you. I have fans. And uh, this is this is my lovely assistant slash co-host slash partner in crime, Amanda. Um, a lot of people ask us how PodCamp comes together and how we handle some of the different tasks involved with, with PodCamp and how we manage projects like PodCamp. And some of the biggest tools that we use are completely free and they're really easy to integrate with different things that you're doing. So if you're looking over here, we're looking at our Slack. And what Slack is, is it's kind of a community message board type of thing that you can talk about with different things. So um, we're looking at the one for Bold Pittsburgh right now, which is Amanda's e-magazine uh, portfolio site that she does for, for Pittsburgh events. And you can see that we've got you know the Bold Pittsburgh name over here, so this tells us which project we're working on. And then we have different channels under here. So she's got finance, fundraiser, general, random, and social. Um, the nice thing about it is that this general, it tells you when, it, when the board was created, and it tells you the purpose of the channel. And so it's for team-wide communication and announcements. And it tells it right there that all team members are in this chat. Now, the nice thing with it is, is that if there are certain team members that are assigned for certain tasks, you can actually click and put them in there. So I'm going to go ahead and add this. And I can upload a file. I can create a snippet. I can create a post. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do you have any files that we can upload? Um, well, this is a dummy account, by the way. This isn't the real Pittsburgh one. There. Oh, OK. This thank you. Thank you. So that means I can click into other things, too. Yeah. All right. So um, we're in the general, which is, is open to everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and upload a file. And I'm not going to click that twice, because that does weird things. So you upload your file, and just like anything else, it gives you the option that you can pull to pick something in. Um, I was just going to put the image in there. So we've got this image here. We're going to go ahead and double click that and put it in. Now, you can select where it's going to be. So I'm in the general thing, but I realized, oh, no, I didn't want to share that to general. I wanted to put that in fundraising. So you can click your which thread you're putting it into, and then you can add a comment. So you know we're putting this in for fundraising. Um, cool place for after party. You hit your upload button, and then everybody that's part of this work group for Bold Pittsburgh now gets a message that they have this information waiting, and they can pull it up and they can check and follow the conversation. So it's kind of, to put it in an easy description, it's kind of like a private Twitter type of thing where you have your feed, you have your people that are specifically part of that group that need to be invited into it, and you can manage different aspects of it within your, your listing groups. Um, you know, so we're going to go ahead and check under the, the finance over here. Now, I'm going to invite others to this channel because I want Amanda to to be part of this. So if I search for, yours is Amanda or Al? I'm going to go ahead and invite her to this. And it's telling me now. Oh, but that's because you don't have them for the team. OK, so we would have to invite her to the team. So when I'm inviting a member to the team, it comes up. And because I selected that I'm doing this from the Finance tab, it's going to automatically attach her to the Finance tab. Um, the random is also just one of those general group things. So it can just put it to her in that group. Um, so it, it wants to make sure that she's getting notifications on that. I don't want her on the random tab, so I can just click and take that off of there. Well, then it pulls up my other options. So I want her on Finance and Fundraiser. And then I add her email address. And then I can invite her. So now she's got the invite pending, and she'll, she'll get that, and she'll answer it. And then when she actually signs in and accepts the, the acknowledgment for it, she can now see all of this thread. Um, 
again, just like with Twitter or Facebook, you can do direct messages to the person. So if I wanted to send a message just to her about, you know, hey, um, you were following up with Tavern 245 for our post party for PodCamp, you know, what's the status on that? Uh, again, just like Twitter and Facebook, you can also use the at whenever you're putting in a com comment. So um, at, and since she's not in here, it's not giving me the option, so I'm just gonna put the at here. Um, How's it going in the hub? So then anybody who is part of this thread is gonna get that message. Um, it makes it nice because if you're unable to, like if your schedule's busy and you, you don't have an option to get together in person, it makes it super easy to be able to integrate conversations outside of something like direct messages in Twitter or outside something like doing a Facebook group type of thing in order to kind of track and, and get that information all in one location. Um, so yeah, that's, that's essentially a very, 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 very brief synopsis of that. Um, if you go into your invite people, you can manage your team members. So this shows me that I have one team member that I've invited, you know, that it's me. Um, guest accounts, Amanda would be coming in for a guest account when she accepts that invitation from me. And otherwise you can go in, you can check your account and profile information to set your settings just like you would with anything else. Um, your team directory, again, once you have your team identified for Bold Pittsburgh, it'll specify what your team members are. Uh, you, it has the email information so that if you need to send emails to everybody, you can do so. For Office is Slackbot, so he will teach you stuff without it as soon as you open Slack. So if you wonder who Slackbot is, he comes with the um, program, and he will uh, every once in a while if they have like a new update and things like that, or something cool that they want to show you. That's where that thread will be is um, when he ever he's talking in Slack. Yeah, and you'll get notifications from him if you've been added to something or if if something else is going on. Um, the nice thing is, too, uh, that in your settings over here, you can also check um, your message archives. If there was something that you had already archived, you need to double check to see, oh, that wasn't supposed to be archived, or I can't remember if this went to so-and-so or whatever. You can go into your message archives and double check and, and see what the status is on, on all of that. And it'll tell you, again, over here to the side, you know, how many members are part of that specific thread. So again, that works well if you have different things, like for scheduling PodCamp, for instance, we have somebody who handles like our marketing outreach, you know, our dealing with our, our sponsors and whatnot. We have people who put together the meet and greet event. We have people who put together the session schedules and the session submissions. Those people don't necessarily need to be part of all of those conversations. So to try to save them some hassle and you know having to weed through what they need to pay attention to, having specific channels set for it make sure that they're focused on what they need to be focused on and that they're not trying to find out what they need to be paying attention to if there's additional portions on the thread. Um, so like general information you just wanna keep together uh, within that stuff. Uh, your team directory, like I said, we just went over that. And then the statistics, I haven't really done much. This isn't gonna show us much because we haven't had enough activity to compile usage statistics. But uh, the usage statistics, you can go through, and if you have a very inactive user, like you can kind of figure out what time of day they're, they're gonna be, they're checking their stuff to see if there's a better time to interact with them. Um, you can double check to see, you know, specifically who's on your team and who's contributing to different things. So if you see somebody who's doing a lot of work and contributing, maybe there's somebody that you can pull to work on other things to kind of help build whatever project and work whatever you're working on. So that's just kind of uh, one of the, the nice little tools that we have as far as that's concerned. Um, you were saying something? Yeah, I was gonna say, well actually, um, hopefully it won't come up. Okay, it's just gonna show some. Uh, the, this is actually the desktop app that you can download um, through uh, the App Store or whatever, uh, whatnot. Um, it can actually do different channels. So if you look over here on the side, I have one obviously for Bold Pittsburgh. This is the real 
old Pittsburgh one. Um, as you can see, I do a lot more. And I'll, we'll show you what the Trello integration is because that's actually pretty cool, uh, a different type of notification system because there is app integration within Slack. So it'll work along with different apps and I can actually show you that. But here you can see we have um, PodCamp go, and this go is... Ahead and click on PodCamp. <laughs> Go ahead and click off that. <laughs> go to, there we go. Um. So like it can go from Bold Pittsburgh to PodCamp to this is like a different group here. Um, and I can easily switch between the three. So if I have different conversations going, I know that I can, and these will light up if there's a conversation going in each one. So if I open this every day and I can see, that, oh, there were comments in the PodCamp one, there's a notification right next to it. Um, I can show some integration. Do you want to show the integration yeah, real quick? So we can, um, so let me, oh, I don't want that to fly off the account. Fly that somewhere. Okay, so if we were to start a new channel First of all, it has to be all in lower caps, or lower case, not um, no caps. And then we could say like um, uh, Trello integration. Okay, and then you can send invites. Um, the bold Pittsburgh one, I don't, I use it as more of a notification service. I do not have other people invited into there. Um, I use it strictly for Trello integration so that I can actually, anybody who works in Trello in that group, I can see what they're doing the second they do something. Um, they move a card, they add a description, they type one word in Trello, my phone goes off. So it's actually pretty cool. So we can create the channel and then it's going to say like, this is all the things you can do, and you can say, I got it. And then you'll see it says, add an app or custom integration. We can click right over to website. It's gonna take us into slack.com. And then it allows you to pick from all these different apps. Um, to have some type of like, it, just notifications, or they work together. Um, some of the new coding in Slack, you're actually able to do um, actual coding in it and then move cards in Slack, in Trello through Slack. So it's gotten a lot more complicated than I've cared to go into <laughs> um, on that end, but you can simply just uh, tap Trello. Um, this is actually, it's easier if you search from it. And it'll say Trello alerts, and you just hit add configuration. It's gonna ask you a bunch of questions, like what do you want notifications on? And um, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. And then at the bottom, it just says uh, save integration. It's a pretty great thing. So that is in, the, that is in both the website and the app, that that all works. Um, I like the app a lot better, and the app on your phone kind of works the same way, and on uh, the tablet. So you're kind of able to um, keep moving. So that's Slack. Did you have anything else you wanted to show? No, and we'll take, we'll take some questions and stuff as well, because um, I know we're kind of throwing a quick mass overview of it, and yeah, definitely, but we'll move on to the the Trello portion of things. Okay, so Trello is actually my favorite. <laughs> um, so for instance, this weekend, so you sign up and basically it's boards that you can move throughout. So this is actually the legit um, how we organize bold. Um, there's actually 16 members inside of here. Um, they each will be assigned a little avatar as you can see there and then they have boards. So this is everything that we are going to write about in the month of September. So I'm able to assign a person a card. So for instance, I'm gonna write about Poros this year, or this month in September. 
So I can create a board. I can, I create boards, I'm sorry, let's start at the top. So I can add a list. I can make this anything, like, and hit save. Then I hit what's called add a card, and we can do something like, and you can make this for anything. We did different things like um, website upgrade, uh, app integration, type of things like that, all in different, it depends on what you're working on as your team. So now I created the card like restaurant week. I only pulled that because it's going on right now. Um, and you can add a description. So And then I have the um, ability to add a comment and anybody else does too. So they can add comments and anything like that. If you click over here where it says members, you can see everybody who's a member. So I'm gonna automatically add Missy here. Now that means whatever I do in here, she's gonna get a notification through her email that I've added her to that board and I'm doing something on that board and or I can talk to her directly in the comments by typing at Missy. Um, you can also add a label. You can name these labels. So if you want something like green to be video work, yellow to be blog work, orange to be social media work, you can actually change what the labels are and you can also work in colorblind friendly mode. You have a checklist that you can create on your own. So if you have a to-do list, a multi-stage project going, you can definitely do that uh, as a check off. You can assign due dates. So if you're working on a project, you can tell, I can tell Missy that I need this piece written by the 23rd and save it. Now she'll get that as a notification Then I added that. Attachments. You can attach from your computer, your Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, attach a link. Um, there is a business class where you can do a little bit more um, in attachments. It's cool on the app because you can actually, uh, oh, and you can also drag from your desktop straight into it. So if you have, let's see here. If I wanted to add the PodCamp online guide, which is a PDF, I can just drag and drop straight onto the screen. And it's gonna say it's uploading and then it's done. Um, other team members then can download, or if they just click on it, they'll get a preview in another tab. You can also move the cards, which I'll show you is an, if this is one way to move them. There's another way also, you can copy a card, I'll use copy the card at the end of the month because our themes repeat, like restaurants, um, self, things like that. I can copy the card exactly and just change the due date. So the description will stay the same and everything. Subscribe, I can subscribe to it. I don't do this because like I said, I do Slack integration. I just kind of like the way it flows a little bit better that I can see everybody in the group when they move a card. Um, and you can vote. So if you have something like, hey, we're picking this place for our party, what do you think? They can vote yes or no. You can also archive cards. Um, this moves them into an archival or you can just delete them straight up. Uh, again, add comments. It'll also track your activity. And you can always change the title midway through if you'd like. Also in here, you have a menu. And this is kind of more an overview of settings in Trello. You have a change the background. So people color code depending on the importance and also what it is. Um, if you update the business class, you can make photos behind it, um, your company logo, anything like that. So it, you can definitely customize it up more from that. This is cool. You can filter the cards. Again, this is where you label you can change what the label names are. So if you're doing just video work and you wanna make everything a green label, have videos, that's it. And you can label, make the green label video, and then in the cards, you can label whatever you need to with the green. 
Um, it, it's easier when you get like 50 million cards and like 50 people working on something to filter it out that way. Power ups are pretty cool. I have three that are my, these three are in there. They're also more in, um, you get a little bit more business class. Again, we wanted to show like the free features. You can do calendar. So what this will do is if you give somebody a due date, it exports to your iCal and their iCal or their Google Calendar, whatever you set up in, um, in settings. So it won't just show up in their Trello notifications or Slack notifications, it'll actually show up in their calendar as like a little dot and it'll say you have a due date in Trello. Um, card, a card aging is pretty cool. Um, I can actually show you an example of that. Um, because it's it, what it does is it actually turns the them a different color. So if you see, let's see if I had it turned on here. I did. Let's see if they give. Okay, so if you can see, like it'll actually turn and crimple the um, the edges and make it look like old paper, the older her project sits. So it's actually like a visual cue that your project has sat too long. Um, the first stage is it turns yellow and then it cracks and then it ends up looking like that, where everything's faded and it looks like a piece of paper that's out in the sun too long. So I think that's a really cool feature that I always turn on. Um, just because it's a, it, it's a little bit more fun. And it's a visual cue for my team to be like, oh my goodness, my card has gotten old. Like, I need to work on that. Um, voting again being enabled is a, an awesome power up. Stickers, if you have business class or even you can do certain stickers. So if you, uh, Missy does her article early, it's wonderful, it's good to go, I can give her a heart. And who doesn't love stickers and badges? but your team. <clears throat> um, and again, more, you can obviously, there's a ton more in here. You can copy the entire board. You can print and export it. You can link to the board. All of that's in here. Again, your activity is off to the side here. And notifications turn up here. Information, those are your power-ups. This would be your settings and adding, you can create a new board, create a personal team on there. Um, you can, uh, to back back out, you can go straight here and actually have an overview of every board that you have. So like mine go back to June. I won't really need June much longer, but I like, or May even, um, I can say, uh, Great, May, this is what we covered last year. Are those events again next year? And I can archive that card for the next year. So something like the Arts Fest, I know when it's coming up every year, I can pull that card and say, okay, this is what we did last year for, what are we gonna do this year? And it's all saved. Um, as far as, oh, another cool way. So I showed you that you can move the cards through that button, but you can also pick and drag. So when it's ready to go, you could just move it along. So you can actually see your progression. Um, and again, when you have integrate, like the Slack integration, you will able to, uh, you'll get a notification that that was done. And the same thing works for the app. You can literally hold down with your finger or your thumb or whatever, and just drag the board along or the card along the board. Um, there is like a calendar view also to where you can see what's coming up and what you've already given an assignment to. So I said this card needs to be completed by the 29th so I can see that account in that view. Um, and you can also go by week, uh, week too. So, and again, you can add multiple teams to this. So multiple team members. So. Say, so I showed how to add Missy. You can also do a little drop down menu here. You can edit the label, change the team members, and they all just show up right there. Again, it's the same as Slack. You invite a team member, they make an account, 
they will tell you their name or they're automatically integrated in. Um, what I had to do for my team is then show them how to use this. So it was a tool that they were familiar with and make sure their notifications were turned on on their phone so that they didn't miss it, anything that was going on. Um, Trello does not have a desktop app yet. I wish they did because it would be a lot easier. Yeah, uh, it was shocking to me. I keep looking and I'm like, come on. Um, there is usually a little guy when you sign up, his name is Taco. He is a, a husky. You will see him up in this area every once in a while when there is a new feature added. So if you see like a dog pop up there, that's their feet, that's their like guy to teach you something. So he's in the beginning too. He'll kind of do a little tutorial when you first sign up um, and do that. You can also search for your boards. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. This is like, it's amazingly complicated, but it's so simple once you learn how to use it. I fly right through it on like my iPad. I'm able to like type stuff straight into it, move cards, um, and work very easy in the app and on the desktop. So it's actually become my favorite tool <laughs> that I've learned how to use. Yeah, and if I could just add a couple. Yeah. yeah. Now, as, as one of her team members for Bold, it's really easy. Um, like she indicated, I get a notification whenever she tells me when my deadline is and what my projects are. So I know that I have X, Y, and Z that I need to do. And then I could go in, I'm a, a PC girl, so I use Microsoft Word to write up my articles. And I will go ahead and I'll just drop and drag the uh, article into my board whenever I get it done. And photos, if I have anything that I'm doing with photos, again, click and drag, it's, it's right in there. And then once I'm done, I literally take my card, you know, mm -hmm. so like she was talking about that we could move it, I would take my card over to, I'm, I'm going to my card here. Um, I'll take my card and I'll click and drag it over into writing. She gets a notification as soon as I do that so she knows that I'm working on this project. Uh, when I go into it, like she said, I can click and drag my article in there with my photos. She'll get the notification down here that I've this card has been moved from proposed to writing. Uh, so every step of the way she's getting notifications of it. When I finally get everything done and it's ready to be edited, she's able to take it, send it, up, send it over to our editor, gets a notification, and then our editor can drag it from here over to edit when she's editing it. Yes, yeah, so you can add a second team member at that point if you need to, or a third or fourth. So what I usually do at that point is I will, and with Missy, I will add on another member, and Amanda then will get a notification that it's time to stuck. <laughs> you can add um, there. So now it added two members. So you can add multiple members on and on and on. And now Amanda's queued up that she's like, oh, I have something ready to review. She can go in there and grab it and edit it. And then. And Amanda's very confused right now because she's probably getting these notifications and going, why are how are they writing this at PodCamp? <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's really simple once you actually get into it, and I think it's a really great project management tool when you have a multifaceted project that involves p other people that you might not see like face-to-face -face or be able to you know, have a cup of coffee with every week or so to, to touch base on. Uh, it works really well for somebody, um, like I know Sorg has a lot of different projects, and we have different parts that we're moving in with different things. And Frank's sitting back there chatting with him, so we'll have podcast things that we're doing that are more than just like the Sorgatron media or the Sidekick media stuff. And he'll take and break that out into a separate card. And then when we're done with that card, we move it over to completed and it's done. When I'm all done, even though I keep the cards from months to come, it'll go to the done file. And I will be able to be like, okay, last month we did cover that. So if I ever decide to uh, go back to my PR people and my media people and I say, this is what I covered for you last month, I have a record of it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's very simple to add things. I like the organization tool of it where I can go into any event um, 
and I have automatically the photos that they sent, even photos that other people sent me, like here's one from Wiggle Whiskey. They sent over the document and the photos and I was able just to click and drag them in um, without having to worry about it. And when she was just clicking through those screens, that was another thing that, that I just remembered. Um, the, the nice thing about it is when you go to your boards, this indicates that she has her recent boards, she's got her personal boards, um, she's got her bold Pittsburgh, different things. So you can do the multiple boards and you can kind of group them together with what projects you're working on to break it down by color. So when you're looking at that side screen, like my Sorgatron Media stuff, Sorg's favorite color is purple, so my Sorgatron Media boards are all purple. And if there's something that pops up on that, I know that that's something I need to look at because purple stands out. Um, so it's just, it's kind of cool that you can craft it and use it the way that you want to and customize for, for whatever project you're working with. And, and starred boards work the same way. Those are things that I know are ready to be rolling out now. So if it has a star next to it, that means it's ready to roll, it's ready to launch, it's ready to go. It's this current situation that I'm working in right now. So are there any questions? <laughs> yes, question. Yes, I, um, can you put PDF and video into there? Yep. Uh, yeah, you can drag, I actually send her PDF stuff all the time. Um, video, I think I've sent you video links. Um, I don't know, but we can test one. I have an MP4 right on the thing, so I can open up a card and we'll take the MP4. Oh, see, it exceeds the limit, so you have to watch that. But, you know, we've sent links to the Dropbox and th items like that through there so that the, at least the links were organized. Um, well, I know one of, the, one of the things that Sorg does is I do transcription work for some of his clients. And when he does his audio file, he'll send me a link to that audio file and all I have to do is click on the link, it opens it up, I can then download it directly so that I can put it into my transcription software. And just having the link is the easiest way to do it as far as we're concerned because of that space requirements, so. They both do some of the same things, and we use them kind of in tandem. Okay, so the simplest way I can break this down is Trello, which is what we're in right now, is more like Pinterest for your business. You can make those pin boards, make those to-do lists. Slack is your communication tool. It's your, it's your less annoying group text. That's the simplest way I can kind of break it down. Um, in Slack, yes, you can do things like organized communication, but it's more like text messages back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can add in photos and video and things like that. This is just a little bit more elaborate mm -hmm. to where you can add descriptions, comments, due dates, things like that. Whereas eventually in Slack, you lose the conversation, um, like much like a group text. Yeah. Well, and, and to put that into even more perspective, again, I, I work with Sorg with his stuff and I, when I'm setting down to work on stuff, I pull up Trello before I pull up Slack. <laughs> so we, we've had some miscommunication because there are things popping in, in the Slack, which is again why it's nice that he'll put the at Missy in there. Because if I see the at Missy, I get a notification on my cell phone that I have a message from Slack. And then I know that, I, oh, okay, I do have to actually go pay attention to that. So you can kind of foster and tweak it that way too. Plus, without the 50 million group texts, like for me, for instance, I would have to have, if I'm publishing 30 blog posts or like you're doing like 100 shows, 200 shows a month, you would have 200 conversations mm -hmm. to keep organized the video link, the audio link, and the photos. Tre uh, Trello does a little bit easier where you would only have a board. So the board, each, board, each uh, podcast could have a board each month. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit more cleaner of a to do list. So I, I have a group of podcasts, and different shows. Mm -hmm. I can create a board for each podcast. Yep. Mm -hmm. Invite the members from that show. And we can communicate. Here's directions to the location. Here's this week's show notes. Yep. Correct. Build them and then communicate through Slack as well. 
Correct. Correct. And they can integrate. So what they can do is, is if they go into Trello and move the board or do a part of the checklist, you'll get a notification in Slack that says, um, Jim Cren was, uh, did the checklist, did an item on the checklist, moved the board to finished, um, downloaded the PDF, any of those types of things, you'll see your team um, working with that integration. So Almost it's more like group text versus, um, it, and you can integrate it. So you can have two things running at the same time. Right. This yeah. Project, exactly. And the nice thing about the Slack is that you can create different boards within the your own Slack. That, like I know, Sorg is a stickler for this is where we talk business stuff. You know, so this is I don't want jokes in here. I don't want ongoing conversations in here. This is for, we have ideas for, you know, pop-up podcast type of stuff. We have ideas for our 10-year anniversary. We have ideas for whatever. So it kind of truncates that and cleans it up. Um, you know, like our, our general, and we have a random, I think. The general is just general conversation. The random, I avoid the random because it's usually random stuff I don't need to pay attention to. It's the guys telling jokes throughout the day when I'm working. And by the time I get in there, I have like 40 messages. <laughs> so it's, it's, I just overlook it. But. Yes, yes, yes. Plus I think also like um, it would be also that your team can send in items. So if they're already on site taking pictures of something and you have three or four people all taking pictures and video, instead of emailing it to you or sending it to you, they can immediately go into their Trello on their phone and attach mm -hmm. the video. It works very simple. Um, there's no need to use like a Dropbox or any, not video, but I mean photos and things like that. You can drag right in and you won't have to worry about it. Probably small amounts of yeah. No, I did, um, last month I did 25 photos from um, a restaurant. 25 photos went up into Trello, no problem. Okay, so we're using Google Drive or Dropbox. Yeah. Like and they're getting lost probably. Yeah, I got yeah, this right. is this is a much easier way to integrate it. And if you have specific projects, um, can, I'm going to back out over here to this to the one board that you have started that I hope you're not going to be upset with me putting into. No, it's not done yet. Under the Missy Bakes, I've got three different boards here. So I've got bold cupcakes, no kids allowed. I've got take the cake with bold cupcakes, and I've got a bold look at Pittsburgh wedding cookie table. You're just I, giving away our secrets now. Well, yeah. I, out. Well, here's the thing: is we're <laughs> we're going to have these coming up, so so we're going to do a nice little plug here. Is keep an eye out for this. Um, but the fun thing is, is that I changed the title on this last one, so it's done. Amanda got a notification that that was done. She knows that that one is good, it's ready to go. She just needs to clean it up and then she can run with it. Um, but that way it's not taking away that project. Now the other fun thing is, is that when you click in here, you're seeing all of the, the different things that we've got. Where is this for the scroll down? Oh, two fingers. Oh, okay. So if you scroll down, you see, oh, well, not all the photos. Yeah, that's what I was looking like for. Like on the photos. photos. Oh, okay. So you so, can see. Yeah, you see, we, we've got all the photos here. So all of the photos that I picked for her to use for this recipe book, they're all right there. She doesn't have to go find them. They're all right there. And she can just pull them into to the project. But to answer you, I think the most photos I've done is probably the, the arts festival. I did over 50 just from there press release because they had so much going on so I was able to just keep those all in one spot they're not all over my phone no select all drag them and just sat there and just watched my uh, just watched it spin for about five minutes went and got a drink of water came back they were all uploaded what about notifications Are you getting notifications <laughs> no, I will get an email. I did turn on email notifications for Trello. Um, I did not turn on my phone notifications. For some reason, I found that they were a little bit choppy. They weren't in real time. Um, 
I added the Slack integration because that is real time. Um, literally, like I wish I could show this, but my phone right now is literally like, uh, it just says Slack because every time we would do something, like I can back back out of here and you can actually hear the notification go off. Um, we'll go and, I just integrated this board this morning. So if I move this one, it should go off in a second. Watch now, it's not going to. But it should like, it, your integration goes right along with it. Um, I, it may have reached its max right now. <laughs> My phone may be on fire. Um, I'm at 20 notifications just from everything that we showed you during this. And then literally like, oh see now it's connecting, there we go. So 28 unread um, since then. I like the way Slack does it, the integration. Um, and the notification, it was more real time. And again, that's important for me because I can see what my team's doing. Um, like I said, they move a card, they add a, a thing. I used to, it was crazy, we did a group text in the beginning of Bold. And when they were done with an article, they were to email it to me through Gmail and then text me that they were done with it. I can't tell you how ridiculous my text messages were. Like it got so annoying and I couldn't keep anybody straight. So this way I see, hey, Missy uploaded a document today to Trello and then moved it to write, done. I was, I was in there in five minutes, it went up on the website, it was done. And the other fun thing about Amanda doing that sort of stuff is that there have been times as soon as I move it over into that I'm working on it, I'll get a text message from her that's just like a heart <laughs> because she knows that I'm working on it and she's happy that I'm working on it's it. It's motivation. <laughs> it it's is, motivation absolutely. for your team. And it's nice because I see that, I'm like, oh, I see what she's doing. <laughs> it, did, it was uh, nice. Did you have another question, Frank? I did. Okay. <laughs> Frank's it. Frank, you need a private coaching moment. <laughs> with He's like, that's like, what Frank, this is. Just, I'll come out to the studio next week. <laughs> uh, so I'm assuming I think you might be able to tweak that because I want to say that I'm only getting notifications when I'm added. So if, if Mike sends me an ad Missy, I think I'm only getting notifications for that because it was blown up my phone at work and I'm like, this is, I, I can't do this. Um, I just, I just checked the app. Literally you can go in and it will say push notifications. You can check activity of any time of any kind, only direct messages, highlight words, only highlight words, only direct messages, nothing, push no push notifications off. Then you can do the sound, the timing, and I put as quickly as possible, um, and highlighted words, and I can pick which words are the highlight. Um, so that's in Slack. You can definitely pick and choose what you get a notification for. Because yeah, I mean, my, in some days it's annoying. Um, when it's days that it's me and I'm uploading 50 pictures, that's 50 notifications. And that gets annoying real quick. Additionally, I noticed that some people on ours that we DM with have a do not disturb they put on. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if you probably said it for after like nighttime or something like that. Yeah. And it lets me know they're do not disturb and they're I'm not directly corresponding with them. Right. So yeah, that's yeah, so there's a there's a lot of that kind of stuff you can set up. Yes. Well, dude, I know, so uh, <laughs> No, keep going. Um, it depends on how you want to yeah. use it. Like for instance, like I said, um, none of my team is on Slack, um, but they're all on Trello. Uh, I chose just that Slack was for me to get Trello notifications, um, just because I like the way it worked, like I said. Um, I did, in the beginning when I took my Slack training, they asked me if I wanted to add everybody else and I went to the team and I said, are you guys really gonna use this tool? Like, is this where we're gonna move group text to? And they were like, no. So it just depends if they are actively gonna use it, then yes, they can add it. Um, I think if you put, cause you have teams that you work with, if you even put just a spokesperson from that team if, if I on it, if I can. then that would even be beneficial. One of the things that I know that we use if or is, since the Slack is more of a conversational tool, we have more members on our Slack team than we do on our Trello team. 
um, because the Trello team is, is the like core team people who are actually doing the articles, they're doing the work, they're doing the, the, the stuff. Um, the, the Slack is more, we have some ideas, we want to discuss it, we don't want to do it in a public forum like Twitter or like Twitter DMs, this is a great place for it. We all like podcasting, so we want to share podcasting. We, any great article I saw. Exactly. Oh, that's, this isn't a debunk project. Working. Yeah, that's right. ex exactly, that's what we do, okay. so. You have to be part of. You have to be invited, or yeah. you can set up that anybody at like at PittsburghPodcastNetwork.com is automatically let in if they go to sign up for it. Because you get a like podcamp.slack.com, you know, SorgatronMedia.slack.com. They go there, try to sign in for it, and they'll say whether they're allowed to or not. Or you can open it up that anybody can. I mean, I was trying to think it was like LinkedIn, where you can try to search somebody and request. You can invite people through their email, okay. so yeah, but other than that, you have to, they would have to sign up and make their own account. Yeah. Um, like I said, something that if each podcast had a team, like a team supervisor, that would they would have access to one, and maybe the whole team can have access to Trello, like something like that, to where you're only communicating with the the supervisor of that podcast, kind of thing. Especially like, and like I said, in Trello, you don't have to add multiple team members. Like, for instance, you know, Amanda here with the kitty cat, she never sees if I do talk to Jen on this card unless she's added. So any communication just on this card is a notification to Jen it, through Trello, not through mm -hmm. Slack. Um, but anything I do on this card, Amanda's gonna get a notification or an email about saying, hey, Amanda added stuff to your, or Bold Pittsburgh added mm -hmm. stuff to your card. So they don't necessarily see each other's work, unless they're going in there and they're starting to tap on stuff. Like some of this, Amanda, especially and Missy, they have full access to every board. Certain people do not have access to every board on my on my thing because they don't need to. They don't need to be involved in things like the finances and things like that. So you set them either as a full admin or editor. Or Correct. Or a lot of the same way. Exactly the same way. Another question. Yes. How long have you two been friends? You're quite the team. <laughs> Wait, we're, we're friends? I don't even know this chick. <laughs> um, you guys are great team. Probably like four or five years ago. About four or five years now. Podcamp four. Yeah, Podcamp four. So a lot longer. We lied. So a lot longer when we you first lied. met. You lied. I didn't lie. When we first met. <laughs> and and of course, you know, you, you you go through your stages of you know you're a new person. You're you're an acquaintance. I just kind of know you socially, and then you go to hey, uh, I want to bake in your kitchen. So how's that going to work? <laughs> <laughs> or one a.m. in the morning text message. Yep. Why are you still awake? Why are you still awake? <laughs> All right. I guess we can go straight into wrapping it up. There's only three people left. They're still going in the other room. There's a few people. Oh, we yeah, can make the them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So Did you let them know to come starts, here? You started after them. Okay. okay. I feel bad now that we have this. Are you going there and go? No, but did you tell them to come here afterwards? I will well, we can just all go in there. Or we could we just can all go in there. We could do that. Um, Ray um, Smith, he's a small business consultant for Google, and he's teaching Evernote. So while we had Slack and Trello going, he had Evernote going. <laughs> yes? That's my question. What? Evernote, Trello, Slack, are they similar or the same? Do you need them? Um, I found, and not to dog on what he's talking about, I went from Evernote to Trello. Um, I found that I was more organized on Trello than I was in Evernote. Evernote became a hodgepodge. Um, I couldn't organize a team, I couldn't organize a board, 
I mean, granted, they were by notebooks. The notifications were a little rougher. I have not been in there in two years, so I don't know what it looks like now. Um, but I literally deleted the apps off my phone and off of, uh, and I just don't even go to the site. I still have an account, and there's still stuff sitting in there. I, I found this a lot more organized. And it's also visually friendly. I can use colors, and I can move boards, and it's active. And I feel accomplished when I move a board. There was no way in Evernote to say done with that project. You had to delete the notebook. Um, at least at the time that I was using it. This I feel accomplished. I moved the card, I'm like high five myself and I can go to bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it was something a little bit more pleasing. You feel successful at the end of it. And, and again, it's, it's up to personal preference. Um, for some people, this is a better interface. It's a better way to do it. For other people, you know, maybe they, they go more with the Slack end of things versus the Trello end of things. And then you know, other people still prefer the Evernote over this. It, it's a personal preference. My suggestion, use them all, see which one you like, and which works. Which works for you and your team. <laughs> like I need more things to add, they do. <laughs> I use them all. But Evernote doesn't integrate with Slack. Think, think of them like a, you know, um, Pokemon. I don't, I don't know. A lot of things that do integrate with Slack. That's one of the nice things is it's fairly open within it. So I, I wouldn't be surprised there wasn't. Um, I didn't check on that. I wouldn't be surprised there wasn't an Evernote in that I'm checking right now. I used to use Evernote, it just, it just it didn't work for me, but I like, I like this project management. You guys are probably doing No, Evernote does not have integration in Slack. Oh. Not yet. Unless you go through probably a second, like, or a, some type of other tool. Zapier or, or if this than that. Zapier is basically, I think, an if this than that for businesses. Yeah, I think if this then that, you could probably um, have more. Yeah, you're right. I see Google, yeah. I see Google Drive in there, which is great. So you can drag files. Oh yeah, we, we use yeah. Google Drive all the time. Um, one box, you know, it yeah. gives you your, your mass storage stuff. You can just access it easily and quickly. Google Photos, I guess it's yeah. Yep. I was gonna say, if you are not ready to make the jump into Trello yet, if you guys are already using Google Drive, the notifications alone might be a little bit more conducive. Yeah. So that way you can see when a team member adds something to Google Drive, mm -hmm. you can immediately go in there and grab it. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they do a ton of integration. Like, oh, oh my gosh. I didn't even realize how much they do. <laughs> yeah, they, they've and they've added that since the last time I was even in it. So anything else, Frank? I think that's my uh, <laughs> question for Would you like me to come to the studio on Saturday for a private le uh, tutorial? Well, Friday. <laughs> Help you set up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> He can come and just look at the cool studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are welcome anytime. That's very, very formative. I'm very appreciative of good stuff. Yeah, really good. The best right. app is the one that allows me to talk to people as like uh, Archer and, and Bender from Futurama and <laughs> James Bond and stuff. Uh, that, that turns it, like, it'll pop up as if the user, <laughs> like, how it's Amanda it's there. Happen, it's it's it'll be like some cartoon character or something. And, uh, and Well, well, thank you. If you guys have any other questions, just, just let us know.